Welcome back everyone! Now, wall jumping is one of the most widely used mechanics around video games, and especially 2D platformers. It's a really fun mechanic, and implementing it with code is really easy too. Now, before we start this lesson, this lesson is one of my lessons from the Udemy course I published on how to make a dark, moody, atmospheric 2D game using Unity. It currently has a 60% limited time discount. If you're interested, check the first link in the description. And now, with the intro out of the way, let's start the video. Now in this lesson, we'll be creating wall jump functionality. So let's think of implementing wall jumps as a programmer should. First, when you collide with a wall, you shouldn't be grounded. And the script should check if the player is colliding or grabbing onto the wall. If the player is colliding onto the wall, then you can wall jump. So we're gonna create a bool variable to check if we can wall jump. And when we can wall jump and we press on the spacebar, the player jumps. All right, so now let's go to the player controller and implement that. All right, so first of all, right here, I'm just gonna create a new region. So basically regions are really nice and effective ways to tidy up your code. I'm gonna call it wall jump. I'm gonna end it here. Now, first of all, let's check if we can grab. So a bool can grab. So to check if we can grab the wall. Another bool call it is grabbing. A public float and we'll call it the wall jump radius for the for the overlap circles radius and another public transform wall jump check pause all right so going here I just created the region call it wall jump in the update function so right here let's set can grab to equal physics 2d dot overlap circle and basically set its position to what did we call it wall jump check pause dot position and the wall jump radius and for the layer mask I'm just gonna use what is ground so whatever is ground we can actually use it again for wall jumping if we're colliding with it as a wall if you don't understand how this line of code works and what it basically means, then go to the lesson where I talk about implementing jumping. It's basically the same overlap circle method, but with different parameters. All right, so now in the wall jumping section right here, we're gonna set is grabbing to equal false. So is grabbing is always false. But if we're not grounded, so if we're, if we're not grounded and we can grab, then we're just gonna set if an if statement to check our to check our uh, scale. So our scale is not actually one. So we want to check it. So we want to clamp it to actually be either minus one or one. So it's actually zero point seven, I think. So let's just create a float clamped scale equal math f dot clamp clamp the transform dot local scale dot x only the x scale from the minimum minus one to one now i'm actually recording this again from the future and i actually made a mistake here my apologies you can't clamp the x-axis scale here to one because mine is already less than one it's 0 0.7 so instead just rename it to scale for short rename the float variable to scale for short and type in transform.localscale.x so basically clamp scale is if it's bigger than zero so it's one and then x input is also bigger than zero so we're basically going in the right direction we're basically sticking to the right direction so if the wall is facing left now we can collide with it on the right direction or or another bracket clamp scale is less than zero and then at the same time x input is less than zero so if that's happening then we can actually grab so is grabbing equals to true and whenever we press on the space bar if input dot get key down key code dot space so when we press on the space bar while we're grabbing we want to jump right here but in the update section when we are 
when we are grabbing so whenever is grabbing is true so what actually what we actually want to happen is whenever we're grabbing we want to slowly fall down so we don't want to fall down normally so we actually have a window of time before we fall down we can actually we actually have a window of time to jump <clears throat> so we actually have a window of time to jump before we fall down completely so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create two floats right here I'm gonna create a float call it call it initial gravity scale another public float but this one I'm gonna call it wall jump gravity so this is our initial gravity scale whenever we spawn in whenever we start the game we'll take the gravity's current scale so we'll take the rb.gravity scale and then just store it in a float value called initial gravity scale so whenever it's changed we can actually go back to the initial gravity scale in the start method I'm gonna type in initial I'm gonna type in initial gravity scale to equal rb dot gravity scale so if is grabbing rb is gravity scale so the gravity scale is equal to wall jump gravity and the velocity and the rb dot velocity is equal to is equal to vector 2 dot 0 so in the velocity standpoint in the speed standpoint we're actually not adding any speed we're keeping the speed zero so else if we're not grabbing we just want to keep the gravity scale so rb dot gravity scale equal to initial gravity scale awesome so if our gravity scale at first when starting the game was three or four was three then we can go back to the initial gravity scale because it was stored at the start of the game it was stored right here at the start of the game now let's go back to this little line right here so if we are pressing on the space bar then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add rb velocity to equal new vector 2 new vector 2 velocity i'm gonna set an x input times we want the x's current input so if we're pressing on the left direction we want to jump in the right direction so whatever is opposite to the x input times a float so you can actually input in the jump float the jump float force or you can make another public float to the to be the wall jumps force and then add it over there what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a separate float for the jump for the wall jumps force so public float wall jump force on the X axis and I'm gonna create one again wall jump force on the Y axis now can go back here and then set wall jump force on the X and then another one wall jump force y and then reset rb's gravity scale rb dot gravity scale to equal initial gravity and you're gonna set is grabbing to equal false so we can stop grabbing so this is just to reset the gravity scale and this is just to reset that we're not grabbing so we're actually we've actually jumped so basically is grabbing is equal to false now if we go back now by doing that the player will actually jump but we want to add one more functionality so we actually want to take away the player's control while he's double jumping so there's a little window of uh, 0.2 seconds that the player will not actually control anything you can actually you can actually control it and make it longer or shorter depending on what you prefer so we're actually going to do is we're going to create a timer and this timer from the start of our wall jump will actually start and it'll keep on decreasing in the update function so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go all the way up here and i'm gonna set timers timer i'm gonna type in public float i'm gonna set start wall jump timer i'm gonna set another one call it wall jump timer so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go right here to the movement so we're just gonna open this movement section right here we're gonna take this little piece of movement right here I'm gonna cut it and I'm gonna create an if statement so if wall jump timer is less than or equal to zero then you can you can move so you can check actually for X input and the you can actually move else if it hasn't happened yet else just decrease decrease wall jump timer with time 
to time dot delta time. So this is basically a timer. If wall jump timer is less than or equal to zero, you can actually move and do all the things. If it's not, well, decrease it until it reaches zero. So this is basically just a loop. But we've actually not set uh, when will wall jump timer be less uh, more than zero. So that's where the timer functionality pops up. So wall jump timer is equal to start wall jump timer. Awesome. Now let's save. Let's go back. All right. So going back to the Unity editor, I just added a box, colored it something like red, a red color, and set the ordinal layer for it to three, and set its layer to ground. Awesome. Now let's go back to the player, and let's just deselect everything else. In the wall jump check pause, we're actually what we're actually gonna do is we're actually gonna make another transform position so another game object another empty game object and we're going to call this wall jump check wall jump pause and we're going to take this wall jump pa pause i'm going to put it right here i'm going to take this and i'm going to put it here this is what i actually want to do is i want to also draw another sphere so gizmos dot draw sphere i'm going to set it as wall jump check pause dot position and the wall jump radius. Now I'm gonna set the player to be something like 0 0.5, maybe 0 0.2. Awesome, so 0 0.2 works just fine. And the wall jump gravity, maybe set it as 0 0.3. The wall jump force X, I'm gonna set it to something like 20. And on the force Y, I'm gonna set it to 20. We're going to set the wall jump timer to something like 0 0.3. So to take away the uh, movement controls for 0 0.3 seconds when, after we wall jump. So now let's save and play. I'm just going to set this one to something like 10 and 10. Now if we do play again. Alright, so I just removed the flip function that was right here. And now it works perfectly without any glitches. Now if you've gotten any value from this video, I upload weekly. So don't forget to like and subscribe. And also don't forget to check out the Create a Moody Atmospheric 2D Game course using Unity. It currently is 60% off. The course's link is in the description.